So the Dirty 30, I can't tell you exactly how the idea originated. I just remember that it happened sometime during the road trip. We've been traveling around uh, Mexico and around seven different states since January and um, we planned on ending our road trip sometime in June so it just felt like a natural thing to do for him to do his big birthday challenge um, at our home crag. It had to be on my birthday like I wanted it to be on June 24th. I don't remember exactly how but I was like I just remember I remember saying something about I wonder if I could do 30 routes in a day like I think the more we just like said it then we're like, okay, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna do 30 routes in a day. It's, it's a lot of routes for me. Um, I don't know that many people that uh, have done 30 routes in a day. And on a normal day, on a normal day, if we're not projecting anything, like Maria and I typically like at most do eight. I just wanted um, routes that were really fun to do, you know, cause they, I knew that it was gonna take all day to do. I tied in at uh, around 4.50 and I stepped off onto the rock at 4.55 a.m. on Purple Headed Warrior. So we were ahead of schedule from the start and set a really good tone for the rest of the day. Andrew Perman was game for it, dude. He said he was gonna film. You know, Marie was definitely on board. She's gonna do a lot of the bullying. And then uh, slowly but surely, just other folks, Jordan Disco said he was gonna be there. Folks that I'd never climbed outside with but had seen at the gym at Stoneworks and I climbed with at Stoneworks all the time, all of a sudden just started making a commitment to come out. Was it like 5.09? Sport crew. <laughs> it's way too early to be here. We should have took a should have took a picture of the two of uh, the two cars in the parking lot, <laughs> ours and Juan's. That's pretty freaking awesome. And I knew that I wanted to do like a few tough ones in there. I didn't want it to be just like 35 nines or something. I wanted something challenging in there as well. Um, I didn't you know I didn't want it to be just like a gimme. <laughs> nice. He's got this, totally got this. The next one on the list was Magic Light. And again, it's just a really long route, slightly overhung, which really suits my style. And it just has some really cool, like big moves in the beginning to really good holds. After, you know, after a few bolts, you do a really cool, like almost full span, like full wingspan traverse onto a bunch of lie backs. And it just kind of stays on you. And it builds a little bit of a pump if you're not careful. Land Lover is probably the only route out of the whole 30 that I would say I don't really care for. It's okay. But the reason I kept that one in there is because I wanted one like, like hard personal challenge for myself. And you just grab these like tiny little nipples for lack of a better word, the whole way up. And then the same thing that you use them for your hands, you use them for your toes. And he got into that spot that was really hard and I was looking at the holds. Actually, I couldn't see the holds from where he was because I think even if I had been looking at the actual <laughs> holds, I still wouldn't be able to see them. Holds. And there's a mono move in there and there's a up at the top just before you hit the chains, there's final move that Matt had warned me about that has like just like a little dish of a mono 
and then you squeeze this little wrinkle of a, of a thumb catch with your thumb and that's you just gotta like just grab that sucker on really bad feet and make a toss for a final like decent side pull it was um, the only route that I actually took a fall on I fell once so I forgot about a key hold and I took a fall and got right back up I was a little annoyed and um, and then ended up finishing it on the second go um, you know and I came back down and I was like okay it's over with and I don't ever have to go back and do that route again if I don't want to um, but at the same time you know something about the challenge that it provides is, is pretty rad so I can't say it's completely bad it's just not my favorite route it's like the ugliest holes on the planet <laughs> after I finished that route though I did my favorite 12a at Smith um, and which is heinous cling it was my first 12a at Smith that I ever got um, it's like my third 12a overall uh, anywhere and uh, it's just a really really cool line that um, really I think takes some commitment because it's pretty long and really run out um, it's really run out to the first bolt um, even though the climbing is is good and the, the holds are really good it's still like a uh, mental commitment to make it to the first bolt without falling Clip the first bolt, you do moves on good pockets, clip the second and third bolt, um, start to do a few hard moves. Um, it kind of long reaches too a little bit, but still on pretty decent moves. And then you have a really long run out to the fifth bolt and the crux lies right in the middle and that takes some headspace for sure. She gives the shadow a high five. They slapped hands. It was so <laughs> freaking awesome. It was. It was. It. I. I felt like that was a sign. That was like this. This is all. This is gonna all fall into place. It's all mm -hmm. gonna come together. I've done it so many times because the route is so fun and always still. I'm always a little bit like. Um, I don't know, just a little bit nervous because I've never actually taken the fall. I've always been able to move through the crux without falling. And the final of the hard roots um, was heresy and it's one that I hadn't done in a really really long time and I forgot how incredibly fun that route is it starts off with a wicked hand foot um, hand foot match traverse and you get into this really cool flake that you can sink like elbow deep into this thing and get a good rest and then it just like I mean just from, right from the beginning it's super super steep um, uh, so it's kind of gymnastic gotta you know if you don't want to like flail or actually like flame out on the on the good holds you gotta like really use straight arm climbing and just have your feet dialed and then it just has a really cool move at the very end where um, it seems impossible because the anchors are right below you and the finish hold is way out right and you have to you know grab like a sort of a, a decent left hand pocket but you have to get a really high right foot and then from there you still have to like sort of give a little and grab the huge bucket finish you know and uh, if you're not careful you can like barn door off of that thing um, but if you get it you just don't let go it's so good and then you go back out left and clip the chains and we mark the time when I clipped the chains that got down on heresy it had been just about two and a half hours just motored through the hard roots was uh, and that's when I knew I was like I'm gonna finish this challenge. After that, we just headed over Asterix Pass to start wherever I may roam, which is the only multi pitch of the day. So we also wanted to get that out of the way early because there can always be complications on multi pitch routes. We just wanted to get it done with. It's a five pitch route. That's just super, super wonderful, man. It's it's a five nine route consists of uh, three five eights and two five nines. We both really love that route, and we're looking forward to it. It was also the only one during the day that 
I or anyone else was going to climb with Juan the rest of the day was just focused on Juan climbing, but this one I got to follow him up it. We look over and there's already a party starting up on the second pitch. Like the guy was belaying his partner up the second pitch. And I was like, oh man, this is gonna way slow us down. And we get up there and I just, I told the guy what was going on about my birthday and the challenge. And he's like, yeah, man, come on up. You can, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, can we pass you? And I think those guys, there's two brothers actually, they must have been like, yeah, right, these guys are gonna pass us. Cause they freaking flew up that thing. And I only had to wait for them one time and only for just a couple minutes and they motored up that thing and we were right behind them the whole time. Wasted absolutely no time, but also never had to pass them. We just didn't go faster than them, even though we were both just, both parties were just, I mean, just motoring right along. And for five nines, pitch four, uh, pitch three and four have the most awesome exposure. So the ground just drops off and you, all you can see is just the river below and stuff. And it's, you know, for 5'9", it's, it's exposed. And I remember the first time I ever did it years ago with my friend Josh Cornegy, um, I was a little sketched out, man. You know, I was like, holy crap, man. Because you just can't see the floor beneath you. You know, you're a couple hundred feet up at that point. Um, but super, super fun climb. We did the whole thing, even with eating some snacks up at the top and stuff, uh, in two hours. And we were still way ahead of schedule. It was like 10 o'clock when we finished. We did it. I have a little celebration at the summit and quickly wrap that down to start uh, the, the last 17 or 18 routes of the day. How are you feeling? Oh my God, man, incredible, dude. We're two hours ahead of schedule, man. We freaking cruised that thing. So fun.